distributed GNS3 and Dynamips. In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at some amazing options that are available to us where Dynamips can run on one machine and GNS3, the graphical front end, can run on a completely separate machine and the two can work together. If you're ready, let's jump in. Our objective together in this micro nugget is to run GNS3 on this machine and run Dynamips on this machine and have these two machines work together in a coordinated effort to allow us to build and work with our topologies. Now, before we get all crazy and talk about exactly how to do that, why would we want to do something like that? And the answer is quite simple. Let's say we want to build a 50 router topology, which is quite hefty by most standards inside of GNS3. Where would we want to do that? It's very likely we'd want to run that on a device, maybe a desktop or a server that has the CPUs, maybe has a quad core or has uh, very high processor power and has lots of memory. That's the perfect place to do a 50 router topology. At the same time, maybe we have a laptop. It's got one gig of RAM. <laughs> it's got a single core processor and it doesn't have all the oomph to run that topology. Yet that's where we like to sit and do it. That's a perfect scenario of why we'd want to divide and conquer and work with GNS3 that way, having the GNS3 graphical piece here and the actual Dynamips hypervisor over here. To demonstrate this, let's start at this machine right here and let's take a look at what it feels like when we run GNS3 and Dynamips both on a fairly low end device. And we'll take a look at the CPU. So here's that machine on the right. It's going to be running GNS3 and Dynamips together just resting it has a resting heart rate uh, it looks like about four or five percent without anything really running no routers in the topology if we take a look at the details of this gns3 implementation we go to edit and ios images and hypervisors we'll notice it's using the internal device itself as a hypervisor so that means that dynamips is running on this local machine so if we bring out some devices let's go ahead and close that let's bring out some devices we'll bring out a 3700 and another 3700, and another one, and another one, and another one. And we're gonna start them all up. And I've already got an idle PC set. I wasn't gonna be that cruel to it. So on a brand new topology where you haven't brought up a single router ever yet, you'd also need to set the idle PC so you don't blow the stacks off your CPU. I'm also gonna open up a console connection to each one of those. That'll help alleviate some of the pain as they come up. It's important inside of GNS3, no matter what topology you're running on, when you start up a device, don't leave it waiting for a user to press enter. You can script that or simply open up the consoles and press enter yourself. I need to go to the other ones as well. So there's our four. I've got five routers hiding somewhere. There's another one. <laughs> All right, so I pressed enter at every single console. That's fine and dandy. Let's go take a look at the CPU utilization. So resting, let me move my, not moving the mouse, it's like at 42% CPU utilization, 40, you see the number there. That's not a huge deal. However, it's just five routers and I'm not really doing anything yet. We might be able to run the idle PC and get even a sweeter spot. And you can see what's eating it up. The highest resources right here are Dynamips. That's the highest user. Now let's go ahead and change the table here and let's tell this machine that we don't want to use our own local hypervisor. We want to use a second server. And to do that, we simply go back. I'm going to stop all these. I'm also going to say file and let's start a new blank project. And then under edit and iOS images and hypervisors, check this out. I'm going to say don't use the local hypervisor. I'm going to say that's not the default image anymore. I want to use this remote one. Take a look at this. 10.0.0.40, that's not my IP address. That's a second machine. It is also running Dynamips. And I want to use that CPU and those resources for the actual routers as they come up. So I'm going to save that as my default. And now let's bring on some new routers. We'll bring the same 3700s out again. So there's five. We'll start them all up. And to make it fair, we'll also go ahead and open consoles to each one of those. So we'll open up the consoles as they pop open here. I think he, R4 is hiding a whole bunch back there. And sure enough, I'm just going to press enter on each one to make sure that we get the prompt on each one. And that way there's not any excessive CPU, but it wouldn't even matter because even if CPU is at hundred percent, it wouldn't be on our machine. Well, let's go back and take a look at the HTOP application again and take a look at the CPU utilization here. I'm not moving my mouse. That was taking a lot of it. If you'll notice in the top right, 
Dynamips is not even showing up. My CP utilization is like at hovering below 5%, and that's because the heavy lifting, all the Dynamips work is actually being done on the remote machine where the hypervisor is doing all that heavy work. In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at how we can divide the load. We can have Dynamips running on the heftier machine, the GNS3 front end working on the machine where we want to actually configure the routers and get the best of both worlds. For more information or if you love GNS3 and want more details, come and join us in our CBT Nugget series on GNS3. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.